Hi everybody, it's Des, aka the Shamrock Pixie. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. It is something that I have been diagnosed with, I deal with um, on a constant basis. I'm also going to talk about my brother. Um, he has PTSD. I will explain um, some of the things that he's gone through, what I've gone through. Um, both of our PTSD have been, it was caused by two different reasons. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about Mr. Pickles, who also suffers from PTSD. And, um, and then I'm going to give you, I'm going to pull up these two articles um, and I'll explain the articles. I'll read them. I do apologize in advance if I stumble over words. Um, I also have pulled up a post-traumatic stress in animals article that I'm going to read to you as well. And so with that, we're going to get started. Um, thank you for joining. And I hope this is helps other people who suffer as well. Um, I am not a counselor. I am not a doctor, but I just, I am somebody who, who, you know, has mental illness that I struggle with on a daily basis. And I'm hoping that me doing this, people will understand, you know, what PTSD is, what other mental health, um, issues are out there, um, that people deal with. And I'm hoping that it'll help people who struggle with these different mental illnesses and the people that they love and love them to help better understand. So with that, we're going to get started. Switch over to my other screen. All right. So I have an article here from Anxiety and Depression Association of America. Now I did do some research and this here to me seemed like the best way to, um, to explain it, to kind of break it down and everything for you. And this is for um, humans and animals alike, uh, which you'll you'll find out when I read the um, PTSD in animals article. So I have um, symptoms of PTSD. PTSD is diagnosed after a person experiences symptoms for at least one month following a traumatic event. However, cis Symptoms may not appear until several months or even years later. The disorder is characterized by three main types of symptoms. Re-experiencing the trauma through the invasive distressing re recollection of the events, flashbacks, and nightmares. And I do. I suffer from nightmares. Um, certain things will trigger flashbacks. Um, and so with that, it's, it's can be very stressful because a lot of times for me, I don't understand why or what triggered it. And so, um, it's, it can be very debilitating at times, um, emotional numbness or avoidance of places, people, and activities that reminders of the trauma. And I do, um, a lot with my ex-husband he would uh we would be out in public and he would grab my arm or he would scream at me um and then everybody would stare so i got very self-conscious um of going anywhere for a very long time now when i met tommy um i did not like to leave my house um i only left to go to doctor appointments for me or the children and I would go grocery shopping. Otherwise, I really didn't like leaving the house. I felt safe in my house. And so going out and about, I just, I didn't feel safe. Um, and so it's, it was, it was horrible. It was absolutely horrible. Um, increased arousal such as difficulty sleeping and concentrating, feeling jumpy and being easily irritated and angered. Now, um, I do have problems sleeping. Sometimes I sleep too much. Sometimes I can't sleep at all. My concentration levels are just, some days are good, some days are bad. And it's, 
affects a lot of things um, day to day. Uh, feeling jumpy when Tommy and I got together. Um, I was constantly looking over my shoulder. Um, certain noises would make me jump. Um, and it was, it was bad. <laughs> and being easily irritated and angered. There are a lot of times um, where I just all of a sudden just get really angry and I don't understand why or I get really irritated about something um, and I don't understand why and um, a lot of you know my kids I feel bad for my kids and for Tommy because um, they wouldn't want to be near me in the mornings because I was I would have a bad dream or um, I just I couldn't sleep so I'd be very irritable and I would get I, I would start yelling first thing in the morning and so with that, you know, they were always joking around, oh, don't go by mom. She's crabby first thing in the morning. And in all honesty, it, it's the truth. You know, I couldn't fix what was going on. And now that I'm on some medication, it does help. And there are still times where I have a bad dream, yet I'm able to somewhat um, control it when I first wake up because I don't want to keep putting my family through that. So it's my own personal thing that I'm trying to work through. And I recognize that, you know, this happens. So I need to um, continue to work on that. Um, so we'll go back to the, the article. Um, oh, and real quick too, my brother, and I won't give his name because I don't know you know, I didn't ask him, but I'm just going to tell you the things that I remember um, with him. Now, my PTSD was um, triggered by abuse. My brother's PTSD was triggered by going overseas in the military when um, he was stationed. He did, I think, three tours overseas. And um, I remember the first time that he came back um, from being over... Uh, with his first tour, um, I remember that my mom had to replace doors and patch walls because he just all of a sudden would just punch a door or punch a wall and he didn't know why he was so angry. And we don't know what happened while he was over there because he won't talk about it. And so he's better now. Um, I still think he um, has flashbacks, but he, he doesn't talk about it. And he's more um, mouthy, I guess you could say. He's more blunt and more like he will speak his mind more now than he did before he did his first tour. And me and my brother were very close um, growing up. And that all changed when he went over for the first time and so um it was it was heartbreaking but at the same time he's my brother i love him and i'm standing behind him and i support him and i am so thankful for his service and anybody else out there that is a veteran or you know is serving in the military i give you mad props and thank you for your service um, diagnosis criteria that apply to adults, adolescents, and children other, um, older than six include these below. Um, ex exposure to actual or threatened death, serious injury, or sexual violation. Direct experiencing the traumatic events, witnessing in person the traumatic events, learning that the traumatic events occurred to a close family member or close friend, Cases of actual or threatened death must have been violent or accident, accidental. Experiencing repeating a repeated or extreme exposure to advanced detail of the trauma event, traumatic event. Example, our first responders uh, collecting human remains, police officers repeatedly exposed to details of a child abuse. No, this does not apply to exposure through um, electronic media, television, movies, or pictures unless exposure is work-related. The presence of one or more of the following. Spontaneous or crude, reoccurrent, involuntary, and intrusive 
distressing memories of the traumatic event. Note, in children, repetitive play may occur in which themes or aspects of the trauma events are exposed. Reoccurrent distressing dreams in which the content or effect feeling of the dream is related to the event. And I do. I suffer um, with the, the nightmares. I mean, I, it took me a long time to even be able to put a gun in my hand because my ex-husband held a gun to my head. And it was, it, it took a long time for me to even hold a gun, but I knew that I needed to um, work on that because I used to shoot with my dad, you know, and I took hunter safety at and stuff, and um, I was never scared of a gun until that point, and um, so I, I relived that, even though it's gotten better. Um, a lot of times I have nightmares of where he's chasing me down, which he did in real life, and took a bookcase and whipped it, and it hit me in the back of the head, and I, I was knocked out. And I remember coming to and him laughing, and I, I relived that nightmare. And I, re I relived the nightmare of him shoving me out of a moving vehicle because I didn't say or do what I was supposed to do. I, I remember, and I still live through this, uh, where we were going to my mom's and I had lost a lot of weight. I was so proud and I was wearing all white and my mom had asked for us to stop and get her a strawberry shake. So we did. And um, I was sitting in the cup holder in front of me, and um, he asked me a question, so I answered it, and it wasn't the right answer, so he slammed his fist down on the cup, and I wore strawberry shake for an hour drive, and told he told me that... He told me that if I would have given the right answer, I wouldn't have been stuck wearing strawberry milk all over my brand new white outfit. And so, you know, these things I relive and it's, it's devastating, very much so devastating. Um, flashbacks or other distinctive reactions in which the individual feels or acts as if the trauma Traumatic events are reoccurring. Um, oops, let me go up real quick. In children, for their reoccurring distressing dreams, in children there may be frightening dreams without uh, rec recognizable content. Um, flashbacks or other dissociative reactions in which the individual feels or acts as if the trauma, traumatic events are reoccurring. In children, traumatic specific reenactment may occur in play. Um, for me, um, I have a hard time with seeing a big cup of strawberry shake and I have um, gotten better because um, it's one of my favorite shakes. <laughs> it really is, but it's really hard sometimes to um, not see that and think of what happened that day. Um, I don't wear a lot of white. Um, I avoid um, any type of confrontation. And if I'm asked a question, sometimes I stumble over it. And so with that, I'm, I'm, I am, I'm working on a lot of these things that I've had to deal with in my past. Um, and so a lot of times just certain things trigger it and I, I have to stop and breathe and realize and keep telling myself I'm no longer there. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, intense or prolonged psych psychological distress at 
exposure to internal or external cures, cues that symbolize or resemble an aspect of the tra traumatic event. Uh, psychological reaction to reminders of the traumatic event. Persistence, a persistent avoidance of distressing memories, thoughts, or feelings about or closely associated with the traumatic event or of external reminders, people, places, conversations, activities, objects, situations. Two or more of the following. Inability to remember an important aspect of the traumatic event, not due to head injury, alcohol, or drugs. Um, a lot of the abuse that I endured, um, I don't remember everything. And some people say that's a good thing. Some people say that's a bad thing. Um, the, the stuff that I do remember, it took me a while and lots of counseling to um, come to terms with the little bit that I remember from that whole experience um, in my life. And it's, it's made me who I am now. And I don't look at myself any longer as a victim. I am a survivor and now I need to keep surviving by working on everything that has happened. Um, persistent and agitated negative beliefs or expectations about oneself, others, or the world. Um, examples, I am bad, no one can be trusted, the world is completely dangerous. Um, I still struggle with my weight, I still struggle with um, my looks, um, I, st I have scars that when I see them, it does bring and trigger flashbacks. Um, and it's, it's a process. It is a long process, but I know that one day, or I believe that one day I will never have to worry about the PTSD, um, affecting me any longer. Um, my goal is to become strong enough to where I can, I can say I no longer have PTSD and I'm hoping that it is possible. Um, persistent disoriented blame or distorted blame or se of self or others about the cause or consequences of the traumatic events. Um, I blame myself. I should have been able to leave and I realize now that there was no way. I, I left when um, it was safe when it was time for me to leave. And, um, I left a lot of times, but because he would threaten my mom and my family, um, I had to go back because I, because of, I knew what he was doing to me. I knew in my head, I thought that he would be doing this to my family and I didn't want that. But when I finally left, um, it was very scary because he did. I was in hiding for four years and he kept finding me. He kept calling um, a friend of mine that I had that I worked with and describing the inside of my home that I was staying at. So I moved a lot in those four years and there was nothing that I could do other than just keep running. And finally, I stopped running. I couldn't do it anymore. Um, persistent fear, horror, anger, guilt, or shame. Markedly diminished interest or participation in significant activities. Feeling or detachment. Of feelings of detachment or estrangement. And I don't think I said that word right, and so I'm sorry. Um, from others, persistent ability to experience positive emotion. And I'm still, I'm working on that. Um, everything was always negative for me, and I don't like feeling like that. Things that should make me happy um, 
like when Tommy and I met, I was happy. And I loved the fact that he was there and he was willing to be there for me. It just, it just, it was awesome. But I kept thinking, oh, he's going to get tired of me. I'm not going to be good enough. He's going to leave. Um, if I say the wrong thing, he's going to leave. And that carried over from being abused because that was things that was, I was being told constantly. Well, if you're a better person, then, you know, this stuff wouldn't happen to you. Um, I heard that I wasn't good enough to eat at the dining room table with him. I had to eat on the floor like a dog. And I said this last time, uh, last week too, you know, it, when you get to the point where, you know, they, the abuser has you convinced that you're not, that a dog is better than you are. It takes a long time to get that out of your head. And even to this day, there are times where I feel that um, I'm not good enough to be around. And um, it's getting better, but not it's not gone yet. Um, two or more of the following marked changes in arousal and reactivity. Irritability and aggressive behavior, reckless or self-destructive behavior, hypervigilance, um, and a lot of these I'm not sure what they are, but um, I'm sure that I can, you know, I'm going to look them up, and if you'd like, please look them up as well. I'm going to put the links to the two articles that I'm reading um, in the description below. Um, agitated, startled response. Problems with concentration, difficulty falling or staying asleep or restless sleep. Also clinical significant, clinically significant distress or impairment in social, occupational or other important areas of functioning not attributed to the direct psychological effects of medicine, drugs or alcohol or other medical conditions such as traumatic brain injury. So I mean it's it PTSD is is something that it sounds like can be fixed it just takes a long time to heal so I'm going to go switch over to the uh, PTSD in animals so I'm not going to read this word for word because there's a lot of words in here that I don't know how to say and so um, but I am going to put the link down below in the description. So I'm just going to do a quick rundown on this. Um, according to uh, Russell, I don't think I said the name right, but I do apologize. Trauma uh, represents exposure to experiences or situations that are emotionally painful and distressing that overwhelm a person's ability to adapt or cope and over which they feel powerless, which is so true. Um, it's one of the most common anxiety disorders. Um, the symptoms include flashbacks, nightmares, hostility, difficult sleeping, etc. Some people who get PTSD usually experience trauma from child abuse, which I did not have and neither did my brother. Physical abuse, I did experience physical abuse. Sexual abuse, I did I did suffer from sexual abuse. Um, an accident, I did not uh, have that. A death of a loved one. Um, when I lost my, my godmother, it was very hard. Um, when I lost my grandfather, when I lost my nana, when I lost my grandparents, um, it was very hard for me to cope with that. I didn't know how to, to move on from it. Um, I did bounce back pretty quickly, but I still mourn each and every person that I've lost that I, I absolutely love to death and that I admired and I looked up to, um, or war. And that's how, uh, my brother was in the service and that's how he ended up with PTSD. Um, let's see. 
Okay, so um, since countless people experience PTSD, an interesting topic to ex ex examine would be the chances of animals who suffer from PTSD. Now, Mr. Pickles, okay, and I've talked about this before, um, we don't know his history. So what I'm going to let you know and talk about here with Mr. Pickles is what we believed happened because of the um, symptoms that he displays. Now, animals can't verbally tell us that they have PTSD or what their symptoms are. So with animals, you have to pay close attention um, to their behaviors. And so that this article kind of goes into that as well. Um, and so um, for many individuals, their pets are a family member and Mr. Pickles is a family member to us. Um, now, what we're understanding, so the people that we got Mr. Pickles from said that they got him at a yard sale for $50 with his cage. Um, and I'm sorry, this is really hard. Um, so when they got him, he was $50. They brought him home and they kind of just put him in a room and they thought that that's how he was like a normal, a regular bird that just you put in the cage and you leave them alone. Well, you don't do that with birds. You don't do that with any animals. You don't cage them and leave them. Um, and it's nothing against them. They just were not experienced. And she, she thought he was cool. And um, so she, she got him. Now, um, before then, now he was five years old when she got him for $50. And with that, um, we believe that he was captured and he was forced to breed. And because of the scarring, because of his, um, he doesn't like being in the kitchen um, he doesn't like garbage cans. He doesn't like brooms. Um, and he doesn't, he's not very good with men. So we believe that he was used as a breeder bird, put in a garbage can and forced to breed. Now he's got a scar that goes along his chest, um, and down. And Tommy believes that because of how the scarring is and all the other scars that he has, um, it looks like he had to fight to stay alive. And so with that, um, Mr. Pickles has PTSD. Um, he is what they would call a bird that's been around the block. We don't know how many owners he's had. We just know that he's had at least three. And I am his last owner. We are his forever home and I will never ever let anything bad happen to him. And he is an amazing bird. A lot of people, I, um, a lot of you know who Mr. Pickles is. You know that he's my baby. Um, I show him off because I'm very proud of him and his progress since we have had him. We'll have him um, July 5th will be a year that we've had him and he has come a long, long way since we got him. Um, and him and I are, are bonded. Um, he is my support animal, my emotional support animal, and I am his emotional support human and we are healing together. And that is amazing. Um, I feel is amazing because we were brought together for a reason and I believe it was to heal and he has, he has changed my life a thousand times, um, a thousand percent. And so it's, it's awesome to have him in our life. Um, let's see this here, this little, um, portion here is talking about a cat with PTSD, Lola, um, in 2017, in Afghanistan, a uh, tanker truck was bombed. Now, 150 people, 
lost their life and seven over 700 people were injured and may they all rest in peace and i hope everybody healed um but the impact of the explosion was felt several miles away um about 20 minutes after the explosion this poor kitty went into hiding and for the next week she was very edgy um and then small sounds um you know she got really clingy to her owner and so you know she her eating decreased she lost weight and so with that it doesn't really say how she's doing now but um the military has um seen this reaction to stress and their dogs are military dogs. And so with the military dogs, they suffer from canine PTS. And so it, sometimes it makes them more aggressive, timid, or unable to do their jobs. And it's very sad. Um, and with those animals, you know, they get, they brought home and, you know, they're taken care of by the people that they, that love them. Um, here, it talks about a chimpanzee who experienced PTSD um, when his mother passed when he was 13 and at 15, he suffered a serious injury to his arm. Um, and I believe this is out in the wild. Um, <coughs> I do apologize. Um, he, when he injured his arm, you know, he disappeared for a few months. He isolated himself from his community. Um, and then when he returned, he was different. He was easily agitated, angry. Um, he was more fearful. He had very hard time sleeping. Um, and it's very sad to see animals have to go through that. Granted, it's very sad that anybody has to go through PTSD. Um, but we as humans are able to express and to talk about our PTSD and what happened where animals can't. And so we have to sit there and pay attention to their, their, their movements and their behaviors. And, and sometimes we don't get it right. But as long as we have love, you know, we can help these animals to thrive and to become better and to um, be the better um, version of themselves. And that, and I, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I need to take a drink real quick. You know, for for humans, you know, PTSD, we always want to strive, you know, even in general, even if you don't suffer from a mental illness, um, you know, as humans, as people, we want to strive to be the better version of ourselves. So we always want to work on that. And so with animals, you know, I know they they feel that way as well. They just don't know how to do it. So we have to teach them. We have to show them love. We have to make sure that they know that no matter what, they are they have unconditional acceptance, unconditional love. And so um, this person, Ram, says states that animal mental illness can be triggered by many by many of the same factors that unleash mental illness in humans, including the loss of family or uh, companions loss of freedom, stress, trauma, and abuse. Um, it is an awful illness that people, uh, that some people have to deal with. And um, they are forced to re relive whatever tra trauma they experience through diff uh, different psychological symptoms. Um, it is evident um, through many articles that ones mentioned above, the ones mentioned above, that animal can indeed suffer PTSD, just like humans. Imagine, now this is a very powerful statement, and I, I really want to emphasize this. Imagine a mental illness so powerful that it has the power to affect both humans and animals. That is the impact of post-traumatic stress syndrome. It is. It is so true. You know, this is so powerful that it affects both humans and animals and people who suffer from PTSD. You know, I can relate because I suffer from it. Mr. Pickles, he suffers from it. And together, even though we, 
we both have, um, and even my brother, he has PTSD, you know, but for my home here, you know, Mr. Pickles has his PTSD. I have PTSD. We have come together and we are healing each other. And it's a very powerful thing. And, you know, to think that at one time I was so smart and, and I'm still smart, <laughs> I'm not saying that I'm dumb, but, you know, to where I didn't have any of this affecting me. And then I go through the abuse and I leave the abuse and I get away and I survive and I'm, I am who I am now. It didn't destroy me like I felt it did. It made me stronger. And yes, I am still fighting every single day with the fact that I have these mental illnesses. But you know what? I'm doing something about it. I had to come to terms with that I needed help. And I took that first step and I got the help that I need. And I'm going to continue to become stronger, more powerful, more engaging, more loving, and be the better person, the better version of myself. All right. So with that, I'm going to let you go. I hope you have a wonderful day. If any of you need to talk, you need to open up. Remember, my channel is a channel for safety, for non-judgment, for acceptance, for a place that you can come and be you. And if you have a question or if you feel that nobody wants to listen, I'm here. I am here for you. Um, I love you guys. Much love to you all. Um, don't forget, Saturday, 11 a.m. Central on the Shamrock Pixie channel. I have a mental health chat with an open panel. Everybody is welcome. Be it somebody, be anybody who suffers with mental health or anybody who supports somebody with mental health. Or you just want to come and support everybody in chat. You are welcome. Um, so... 11 a.m. Central Time, uh, mental health chat op with an open panel. Um, if you need to talk, you can message me at the shamrock pixie at gmail.com, and then we can talk further. I can give you my phone number. We can talk on Facebook. We can do video chats. You let me know what you're comfortable with. With that, I'll talk to you later. Have a great day. Bye.